bugs. Creepy, crawly, and absolutely essential to life on Earth. Most people try to avoid them, but I've always done the opposite. My name is Jason Miller, naturalist and professional bug nerd. My mission is to inspire curiosity about the most underappreciated and misunderstood animals on the planet and inspire action to preserve and protect them. We may not always love bugs, but we definitely need them. Want to know how? Then let's get bugging. You may have noticed by now that I'm a big fan of bugs, but even I have to admit, some of them suck. Thank you. The act of drinking blood is called hematophagy, and it's fascinated people for a long time, from Dracula to Nosferatu to the majority of pop culture in the early 2000s. The idea of having our blood sucked is pretty unsettling. Or super hot. I don't know. The line gets blurry. The point is, although human vampires don't exist, plenty of non-human vampires do. A handful are vertebrates, like vampire bats and lamprey, but the vast majority are invertebrates. There are over 14,000 species of hematophagous bugs spread across the tree of life, which tells us that this lifestyle has evolved independently on multiple occasions. So as unusual as it seems, drinking blood isn't that unusual, and the act itself isn't all that harmful. Every good parasite knows that life is a lot easier when your host is healthy and unaware of your presence. If the host gets sick or dies, then the parasite loses a food source, resulting in a classic lose-lose situation. Unfortunately for literally everyone, some bloodsuckers can carry diseases that spread between hosts. Malaria, the bubonic plague, West Nile, and typhus, just to name a few. Now, I'm certainly no doctor, but I do have some experience in this field. I also have some experience in this field. This is one of my favorite bug hunting spots, but occasionally the bugs hunt me more than I hunt them. All of this tall grass is a perfect waiting spot for ticks. They'll perch right at the tips of the grass blades and when something large and warm and delicious smelling like myself walks by, they latch on, bury their mouth parts under your skin, drink your blood over the course of a day or two, and then drop off. Usually the drama ends there, but if it happens to be a deer tick carrying a bacteria called Borrelia burgdorferi, then things get a little more complicated. Borrelia burgdorferi causes Lyme disease, and I was one of the lucky ones a couple years ago that ended up contracting Lyme disease, and I can tell you from experience, it's not as fun as it sounds. Thankfully, you can avoid ending up like me if you just tuck your pants into your socks and tuck your shirt into your pants. You'll look like a total dork, but trust me, it's worth it. Lyme disease has given deer ticks a pretty nasty reputation, but not all bloodsuckers deserve such bad press. Take leeches, for example. They're not everyone's favorite worm, but up close, many of them are pretty beautiful. There are about 680 different species of leech found worldwide, but one definitely stands out among the rest. The medicinal leech, Hirudo medicinalis. They get their name from their use in the medical field as far back as 200 BC. Back then, they were used for bloodletting, the practice of removing blood from a patient to treat everything from nosebleeds to headaches. Of course, bloodletting isn't actually an effective cure for anything. But that doesn't mean leeches can't still be good doctors. Hirudo medicinalis has a compound in its saliva that prevents blood from coagulating, keeping it in a liquid state as they feed. This compound is called hirudin, and it's such an effective anticoagulant that modern hospitals use medicinal leech therapy as a way to keep blood flowing and circulating after microsurgery. Leech therapy is even classified by the FDA as a medical device. This is the only worm in the world with an FDA approval. From what I've read, a medicinal leech can drink 10 times its body weight in blood in a single feeding. Let's test that theory. So something pretty incredible about leeches uh, is that they can go up to a year without food. These two have gone between six and eight months without a meal. So they're probably a little bit hungry and I'm looking real, real tasty to them right about now. So uh, let's just get right into it, um, hopefully and get them to latch in a place that's pretty easy to keep looking at. 
So a little pinch at first, and then the numbing agent kicks in, and I can't even feel it anymore. Now, carefully using this hand, I'm gonna get him on this hand. There you go, friend. There he goes. <laughs> okay. Both leeches have attached. So a question that I've heard before is, can a leech bite make you sick? And the short answer is no, because they can't transmit pathogens the same way that ticks do. But you can get an infection from the bite. This is unlikely, especially if you clean the bite after it happens. But the um, easiest way to prevent this is to be gentle with the leech as it's biting you, as strange as that sounds. A lot of people's first reaction when they're receiving a leech bite is to just yank it off, or some people say burn it off. Those are the two worst things you can do in that situation. Because when a leech is stressed out, uh, or it feels like it's you know under extreme danger, it will regurgitate some of the blood in its stomach back into the body of the host. Uh, and there's a lot of pretty nasty bacteria that can be found inside of a leech's gut, and all that nasty bacteria would go right back into you if you attempt to rip the leech off or burn its head. So what I recommend instead is get something like a credit card and just peel the mouth off of your skin with the uh, side of the credit card. You can also use a key or a Swiss Army knife or anything like that. But the less harm you do to the leech, the less harm you're going to do to yourself. They're swelling up, dude. We got a time lapse here. I should have been keeping my hands still, but whatever. Ben's doing a real crappy job. He's got like a little puddle of blood around his- Why are you, would you let go? Why would you let go? Why are you done? That's so weird. Okay, well. Whoop, whoop. All right, good time. Yeah, you go here. Yeah, one of, I think one of them definitely wins. Good gracious. So like, as you can see, the part where they bit can remain bleeding for quite a while, but no real reason for concern. Uh, it would take 120 adult leeches to drain enough blood to kill a person. So even if you try your absolute hardest, you're not going to die from a leech bite. So this guy was zero grams in the beginning, and now he is 12 grams. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. So, uh... That's a big, big bug. This went pretty much how I expected it to. The other camera ran out of memory. This one won't stay focused. So, back to me in the studio. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> Nailed it. As far as blood suckers go, leeches and ticks are pretty easy to avoid as long as you're careful. The same can't be said for the most notorious vampire on the planet. You probably can guess which one I'm talking about. Responsible for over a million deaths every year. The Count. Wait, no, that can't be right. The Mosquito. Like ticks, mosquitoes can transmit diseases between hosts. Unlike ticks, only the females drink blood. That's because blood is an excellent source of iron and protein, both of which are used by the female mosquito to produce eggs. The males are much more chill. They just kind of mind their own business and sip on flower nectar. But back to the ladies. When a mosquito bites an animal, she spits chemicals into the wound that keep blood flowing in a liquid state while she drinks. The same method used by ticks and leeches, just using different chemicals. Unfortunately, bacteria and viruses sometimes hitch a free ride between hosts, entering the mosquito's body while she drinks, replicating inside of her gut, and then entering a new host through her saliva. There are about 3,500 different species of mosquitoes on Earth, and only a small handful of them are actually disease vectors. The majority don't even feed on human blood. Most actually prefer birds or hooved animals. As for the ones that do pose a risk, entomologists and medical professionals work tirelessly to stay one step ahead of the species that spread illness without also destroying the species that don't. 
The point to all this is that bloodsuckers aren't inherently bad. They're not necessarily good, but they're not all out to kill you. So take precautions, use bug spray, and don't let vampires prevent you from exploring the great outdoors. You've heard me go on and on about how essential every organism is to maintaining the health of our planet. Every animal species has a purpose. So, what's a mosquito's purpose? I have two answers. Number one, they're food for a lot of other animals. But number two, they're pollinators. Male mosquitoes pollinate many small flowers. And without pollinators, our world and our grocery stores would look very, very different. But we'll talk about that next time. Until then, I've been Jason, and we've been bugging.